This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by iFixit. Introducing the all new ProTech Toolkit to give you the compact and complete toolkit for all things DIY. For $5 off your purchase of $10 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twig and enter the code KNOWHOW at checkout. On today's show, you'll know how to build yourself a Raspberry Pi Alexa. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next 30 or so minutes, we're going to be showing you some of the projects that we've been geeking out to so you can take them home and geek out on your own. Yeah, I, I like how you say 30 or more minutes when it, it's something that I'm working on. Yeah. But the shows that you've done something for, it's going to be like an hour, six days. Well, Who look, knows? I didn't want to pack it with a bunch of stuff that I did. This episode is <laughs> yeah. all about you. This yeah. Is, this is a Brian, a cranky hippo a episode cranky of Know How. One that we to... won't try and just fluff up with some early banter. I, I and, didn't you know. want to put a lot of pressure on you, Brian. <laughs> you know I thrive under pressure. That's a good song, but no. <laughs> uh, but the, yeah, the tru truth of it is uh, probably not so much. But No, no, you do. You do. But you know what? What we needed to do is we needed to put you in your element. And your element uh -huh. has really been in the Raz Pi and the Arduino as of late. You've been, you've been making like a master. Well, you know, the, I think it has a lot to do with the, the first project I did was that main machine with the Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. which is by far my favorite. And know. by far the most popular episode of Know How ever. Yeah, because uh, you, know, you heard that Nintendo's releasing that new box, and yes. everybody's all excited about this little retro NES that they're making that you, I think it's like $50 or something, and it only has 30 games, and you can't like change the games or anything. I, I like, was actually, come on, just get a Raspberry Pi and make your own system. I was with Jason Howell on TNT when that announcement came out, yeah. and he was, he was like really excited about it, and I was thinking, okay, I see, I, I can see that, but that's $50 for 30 games. Brian made something for like, $35 $30 and it had all the games. Every game. So mm. the only thing I wanted from it is the actual case. Yeah. And <laughs> the then, controller. The controller. The original yeah. NES controllers. I mean, That's there true. was something about those. Those controllers introduced me to the absolute love of carpal tunnel syndrome. Yeah, you're right? always in the wrong position. The most unergonomic controller you could ever have. Just oh, a okay, square. Wait. How did you use it? Because there was two ways to use that controller. You could use it like <laughs> this, where you had your thumb here and, and your two, two fingers, fingers, and you had the controller down like this. And then there, the more traditional way, which is you had your hands on the side, and then you had your thumb here and your other thumb here. Uh, traditional. I'm a traditional. Because then you can put your thumb on one button to run if you're playing Mario, right. and then just tap the other button to go. Yeah, see, I was more of the... I, I you actually, one of those guys? I, I had the weirdest grip. I did this. Why would you so do that? So this controlled the direction, and this controlled my buttons. That doesn't make any cause sense. Because this hurts so much. You're playing too much. Was, that's yeah. that's how you know you've been playing too much, is when your hands start cramping up. You're like, okay, I got to go. You know, you sound just like my mom. She was like, <laughs> Robert, when your fingers start bleeding, yeah. put the controller down. I'm like, Mom, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, don't worry about it. The blood's just a lubricant. It helps me slide my fingers <laughs> yeah, around. Look how much faster I'm pressing <laughs> these keys. That's kind of scary. Yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> no, but we, uh, we're not going to be doing a, a main machine. We're not no, doing a not retro. Doing Pi. We're doing something that's, I think, far more interesting, and that is yeah. creating Alexa. Yeah, and so if you haven't heard of Alexa, that is the product uh, from Amazon, and it, the Echo is the actual device that you buy that is a speaker microphone system that hooks into your, your network, and you can ask it questions, it'll give you back answers, sometimes it's a little snarky, you know, but you, it's the beginning of the uh, like home automation, like where Precisely. you're you're cooking something, you say, hey, like how much is do I need to put in, like how many ounces in, in a pint or something like that. Uh, you also have to remember that Alexa, of course, it came from Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's an uh, it came out of the Echo was the first one that we saw, which was right. that, that tower of thing. And it, people thought, okay, it's interesting, but we don't really understand what it's for. We don't mm -hmm. understand what you would use it for. And actually, Amazon at the time, they were they were thinking that the Fire Phone was uh, going to be there. Would be integrated into yeah, that? That yeah. was not a good call. That was not a good call. It was not a good product. But the, the Echo and Alexa were the sleeper hit because right. people started realizing, here's a device 
that A, it's a pretty decent speaker. I mean, you can put it in the middle of a room and it's, mm -hmm. it, you know, it provides some, some decent sound if you want to play music. B, it's, it's a personal assistant, but we had that with Google Now, we had that with Siri, we had that with Cortana. Yeah. But the fact that the ecosystem was so open that anyone could create a skill, anyone could play with the code, yeah. anyone could now put it on a Raspberry Pi means the possibilities are limitless for Alexa and Amazon. Yeah, and so if you're like me and you didn't want to drop 80 to $120 buying an Amazon Echo to see if you liked it or even would use it, um, this is a project where it works on the Raspberry Pi 2, uh, which I believe you can get for like maybe under $30. And I just bought a Raspberry Pi 3 for about $35. And it really doesn't depend on the speed of the Pi because all it's really doing is fetching the, right. the data from all the processing from the cloud. Is being done off the on the other side of the cloud. Right. Okay. And so uh, it's a fun project. The only accessory, if you already have a Raspberry Pi, that you need to buy is a microphone. Um, That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. So when I'm thinking of microphone, I'm usually thinking of either a 3.5 <laughs> inch, which we don't use anymore, or some right. sort of USB stick mic that goes on a boom. Right. Is there something that works better for this? Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, the recommended, so Amazon, I have the link in the, the doc. Amazon's GitHub actually, oh. sorry. Well, there's the microphone. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's fine. It's so $2. Uh, it looks, I mean, it's smaller than most USB storage sticks that you could buy. Uh, and It's I, cute. It's super cute. And I didn't think it would work that well, but you know, it actually did. Even in the office environment where things are kind of open and, and loud and there's people talking in the background, when I was using it with this microphone, it picked it up fine every time. Like, I never had any issue with it. So, I, yeah, if you pick this up for $2 and use it, it works great. Well, that's, that's one of the tricky parts of any digital assistant, personal digital assistant. And that is, yes, you, you want it to be voice activated, but at the same time, it has to be smart enough to know mm -hmm what is not you, what it shouldn't be listening to. And that is one caveat of this project is that there is no access to um, saying a command and oh, having okay. it respond. Because that's like a proprietary uh, Amazon code thing. So you have to physically oh, use a, a mouse. Button. You have to, use, or yeah, you could build a button into this and push a button, and then it will activate the listening. Well, but that's that's like their new one, their little puck one. Mm -hmm. The same thing. The, was it the dot or? I uh, yeah, I think it's the dot. The yeah. dot, where it's not always listening like the Amazon Echo, which. Mm -hmm. Some people actually really like because they're like, I don't like the fact that all of this audio is being sent to Amazon at all times. Exactly. So if you're more of like paranoid, security minded, you might want to just do this project because it's it's not voice activated. It's push a button activated, um, and it kind of just gives you an, a, a way to play with it without having to mm -hmm. like buy the product. It, it's really nice if you already have a Raspberry Pi because the only other extra things that I had to buy. Um, well, so the microphone, that little guy, and then just a micro SD card. As long as you get something that's uh, eight gigabytes or or more, you should be totally fine. I had a four gigabyte card that I tried to use from a previous project. It wasn't big enough for uh, the OS. Like the OSs have gotten really big. That's, wow, I yeah, because Raspberry OSs used to be like a maybe 10, 20 megabytes. Yeah, if, you, if you're installing like the Raspbian OS, which you need to do for this project, I think it takes up like about four gigs. Wow, okay. So yeah, definitely, and you know, micro SD cards are so cheap now. Yeah, Just get exactly. a 32 gig Get a 32, gig 32 if you're going plug to. it in there. You probably won't use it all, but you might. Yeah. All right, so I've got, I've got my Raspi, and I could use a two, I could use a three. Mm -hmm. You don't get a speed advantage, but the Raspberry, Raspi 3 does automatically include Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Can I use that? You can. Um, you know, I did straight Ethernet plugged into it. I didn't test it out, but the Wi-Fi, integrated Wi-Fi in the Raspberry Pi 3 is pretty slick because as yeah. far as uh, when you first boot it on with your USB that you formatted and put um, the Noobs OS on, it'll walk you through the process and you don't have to have it plugged into Ethernet. Like, it automatically will do a search for the Wi-Fi networks and stuff. So I just plugged it in through Ethernet because it was easier for me and I stole your switch, uh, which I've been using at the desk. So That's where that went. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, it's come in handy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so you needed a Brass Pi, either mm -hmm. two or three. You needed the, the SD card. SD. You needed the microphone. You probably need some sort of mouse, monitor, keyboard because you're going to have to do set setup. So I have just a cheapy uh, keyboard 
keyboard mouse setup uh, integrated into one USB that I used. You know, everybody has like maybe an extra keyboard laying around, uh, so I didn't pay for that. Uh, and then the monitor I used had I was plugged in through HDMI, so. If you weren't planning on using a, a monitor that has speakers, you'd have to like attach uh, a different little speaker ah, to right. the 3.5 millimeter jack. But if you're plugged into an HDMI, uh, mo HDMI monitor, it you will play the, the audio through that. that. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I did. That you know, this this would actually be a fun project for once you're done with it for me to take and turn it into some sort of 3D encased object because we can use yeah. the printer. To, to give this a little bit of style rather than just bare bone. Well, computer. this was my, my pretty much a, initial playthrough just to see if I could mm -hmm. get it working, how well it would work. And actually, I have a video of, um, of me testing out some of the voice commands, so maybe we should listen to that real quick. Play music. Is not supported for this device. Set a timer for five seconds. Starting now. Play top news. President Obama brought delegates to their feet as he took the stage at tonight's Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia tonight. What is the weather in San Francisco? Sco, California. It's 60 degrees with partly sunny skies. Oh, gray. Hot. On this vessel are not yet operational. Do aliens exist? No proof that alien life exists, but the universe is a very big place. What is the meaning of life? Depends on the life in question. 42 is a good approximation. In the end, this is one of the more fun projects I've done with the Raspberry Pi, and it's pretty simple to get set up and shows off some of the cool features that Amazon has with their Echo. This has been... That's not bad. So that's actually a lot of fun. What I, what I like about a project like this is you can tell that it's ongoing because there are a couple yeah. of skills that haven't quite made their way over yet. Well, and I think that's more of a a patent thing or a proprietary thing because so it won't play music but you can do read the top news and i was able to get uh twit to play over the tune i think it's like the tune in app or anything right i right. just said play twit to like twit.tv and then it like took a second and it started playing uh whatever was on our live stream at the at that time now when you're using this does do i load skills on this like i loaded on my echo or no 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 okay. it's pretty bare bones you just press the button say what you the command that you have and then just it repeats it back or repeats the answer back to you right exactly now you know what Kara, if you could go back to that first link because you did link up the the github repository this is what you're going to need if you go yeah. here it's got all the code all the packages that you're going to need to get uh, now can can i just do uh you know just an, a straight update can i install my raspbian and then just do a, a, a get app and pull it down it's not quite as easy as that. I think the entire project, and I took my time making sure I didn't miss anything, uh, probably took me about 45 minutes to get through all the instructions. Um, you have to download Java to get it to work, and then it's a lot easier if you have a secondary PC, like a Windows machine, and you install a program like Putty, where okay. you can SSH yeah, that in. that makes much more sense. And when you do something like that, you can copy and paste uh, the code over into the shell, uh, which makes it a lot easier than trying to have to type it out on the Pi itself. Very cool. Well, I, you know, I, for one, uh, want to try this now. I've got a Raspi 3 with the 8-inch touchscreen on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking that might actually be a fun place to start. That would be a really cool project. And the next thing I would like to do is I want to make like a, a 3D printed cylinder or something and put make it look like <laughs> make a it faux look like echo, an echo almost. A, a feco. A fe <laughs> something else. <A> <laughs> No, I can't say the other one. No, no, don't say that one. <laughs> uh, but put the Pi inside of like a 3D printed case and then incorporate a button. And I'm pretty sure someone has figured out the voice activation stuff, but you have to, it's like yeah. side loading a program with that is listening for a command and then tells the Echo. Like it's kind of like a well, hodgepodge. I, I'm just thinking that if I have it on the, the touch screen, they, I should just be able to hit that. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, because you it's, could. It's just you a totally mouse. Could. It's a mouse click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, how about this? You build your. Foco. My Foco and with I'll the button. My Feco. Okay. Yeah. And we'll we'll hang. We'll, we'll do, yeah, we'll have a good time. It, we'll see if they if they can talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, right? We can have them have a conversation. With, yeah. It'll be like when they had those Furbies and you had Furbies <laughs> in a circle and they would just mess around with each other. Oh man. That those things freaked me out. It will be on fleek. Totes on Un fleek. fleek? On fleek. Man, Wait, is that, am I using just, that right? You're totally on top of these, I, I am like, uh, these new terms. Pop culture priest guy. <laughs> Oh, it's on fleek. Oh, my man. notes. Hmm. 
I it's, just I listen to Carly all day. I feel like if we did, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, you're breaking yourself right now. I am. And I you am. know when you break something, you probably should fix it. We probably should fix it. And thankfully here on Know How, we know exactly how to get started. And it's not just a toolkit. It's not just a supply of parts. It's an entire institution dedicated to helping you, the maker, build, fix, upgrade, and repair. Brian, there's only one place I know like that. Uh, my favorite, iFixit. iFixit. iFixit is the source for everything DIY, for everything home repair, for pretty much everything that you want to do in your maker slash geek life. You see, they offer us a complete line of tools and replacement parts, but more than that, and that actually I think the most valuable thing that they offer, they give us for free. Thousands upon thousands of repair guides. They are our complete DIY repair solution. From their 21,000 free step-by-step -step repair guides, their more than 80,000 solutions, their huge inventory of parts, and of course, their tools with lifetime warranty. iFixit knows what you need and they give you when you need it. Now today we're talking about their latest and their greatest. It's the all new ProTech Toolkit. This thing I absolutely love. Now I love the old toolkit, but they listen to their customers and they redesigned it to, to fit what we want. The first thing is that it's gorgeous. It's completely redesigned. It's just as rugged as before, but now the tools are easier to access. It includes a new 64-bit driver kit, which replaced the former 54-bit driver kit. Now, more bits means you can open and close more things. A more durable case means that you don't have hinges or latches to break. And because it's magnetic, it means that you can easily pull tools on and off of the roll and assume that they're going to stay exactly where they need to stay. Of course, they've included things like ESD safe tweezers, a pair of reverse tweezers, a flex extension, a newly redesigned swivel top precision driver, and of course, suction cups for display assembly removal, metal spudgers, plastic spudgers, iFix's own rubber handed Jimmy Pry tool, and of course, the ever important ESD safety strap to make sure that you don't destroy the gear that you're trying to fix or repair. The best part is that everything is backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. Now buy it because it's awesome, or don't and you'll still get access to all of the free repair resources on iFixit.com. That's one of the things that I really appreciate about iFixit. Now, we want you to try the tools that we think are the best in the world. Grab an all new ProTech toolkit and get going on your next fix, hack, or build. Just head over to iFixit.com slash twit and use the code KNOWHOW at checkout to save $5 on your purchase of $10 or more. Again, that's iFixit.com slash twit and the code KNOWHOW. And we thank iFixit for their support of Know How. Hey, Brian. What's up? This is a, this is a hippocentric episode, and I was it wondering is. if you might be able to help me with something. <laughs> yeah, what's that? This, this is my one plus one. Ooh, that's getting a little old It's there. a little long in the tooth, but you yeah. know what? There comes a point at which it's no longer an old phone. It's now a badge of honor. It's, That's it's, right. It's yeah. Like How look, much longer can you go? I look at my sister who has now gone through four iPhone 6 Pluses. She's <laughs> broken the screen three times. I think you told me about that. And yeah. she refuses to put a case she on it? She refuses to put a case on it. And, and every time I go over to the house, she goes, why don't you just get an iPhone? I'm like, because this uh, three-year-old phone is working just fine. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have a feeling, though, if you did have an iPhone, you would it wouldn't be destroyed quite as quickly. No, because yeah. I, I do things like not dropping them onto concrete. That helps. Yeah. That definitely helps. But... You know, like anything, they start, they start to get yeah. kind of uh, laggy. And that's what I want to talk to you about. I love this phone, but ever since I updated to the new OS, which I thought would be great, yeah, um, it is feels so. It's not just feeling sluggish; it is crazy sluggish. In fact, there are times where, like, I will hit the the phone app. That's mm -hmm. just the phone. That's what it is. And it can take a full 90 seconds to boot into that app because it's doing something else in the background. Right. And I'll, I'll like to just have to force kill it. Uh, and it's more and more of my applications are getting buggy, hangy, and just not very good. And it doesn't just happen to old uh, Android handsets either. I have a Nexus 6P, which is, you know, I think, what, about a year old now? Uh, definitely one of the top-of-the-line phones that you can get uh, for Android, and it's running pure Android. So right. you'd think, like, oh, Google's designing the OS for phones that are, like, Nexus phones, and it would be run fine. And I started to get into the same problem about six to, or six, eight, nine months, things start acting weird yeah like it's just not as snappy as it used to be well i mean this is still on the original install that i did 
I, I think oh, it's Oh, so you've years. never it's, formatted your phone. No. Wait, can I do that? Oh, Padre, you can. Like any OS, Padre. Like, <laughs> like with, smooth, even with Windows. Smooth transition, Brian. <laughs> like any of them. I'm practicing. Uh, Very well done. Very well done. <laughs> Um, well, like even with, with a Windows machine, I mean, these are, are pretty much little computers. And every so often, I do a fresh format of my Windows machine just because there's been programs that I've installed that I don't use anymore that I need to get rid of, and it just starts chugging. And when you do a fresh clean install, it's like it feels brand new again. I have a built-in way to um, remind me to reinstall my OS. How is that? It's called DEF CON. Every oh. time I go to DEF CON, anything that I touch, and then touch you wipe your machine. Is, I just like some of it's thermite. I just, yeah, no, it's you dead just, now. It's you gone. just burn it up. Yeah, that's coming up. Well, only if there was a way for you to show me. It. I, I'd say maybe in under three minutes, yeah. how I could successfully reformat my phone and get everything back on there. You know what? I think so. And a couple of extra tips also. So why don't we uh, check out the video? Brian Burnett here, host of Know How, and here are three tips for getting your Android phone running buttery smooth again. Even though my device is a Nexus 6P, a top-tier Android handset, I've still encountered some slowdowns after time. The first tip is easy. Clean your cache. Go to Settings, then Storage and USB. Tap on the cache data, tap OK to clear the cache data for all apps. Even with my large amount of internal storage, I've noticed certain apps will slow down as the cache reaches a gig or more. The most recent culprit for me was Snapchat stopped recording. If you're hesitant to clear the cache for all apps, you can drill down to the individual app by tapping on apps. I prefer clearing the entire cache, but it may marginally affect your mobile data rate as some apps will then have to re-download images or data. Now the second tip is a new browser. Maybe you've noticed your web browsing has slowed down considerably. A few websites have been known to have very data heavy ads on a page, making load times longer and causing you to use more data. One way around this is using a web browser that can block ads. My app of choice is the Brave browser. It has a few nice features like enabling HTTPS everywhere when possible and prevents certain ads from loading. Finally, the third tip is to fully factory reset your phone. Sometimes this is the last resort, but you will want to make sure that you've got all your valuable data backed up. If you're not using Google Photos, start now. You can back up all your photos to your Google Drive automatically. You can even drill down into which folders you want to back up and set it to back up only over Wi-Fi and when plugged into power. You can also enable backup my data and automatic restore so Wi-Fi passwords, call history, and app data will be saved to your Google Drive. If you're like me and you don't mind re-entering a few Wi-Fi passwords and app logins for that fresh feel of a clean restore, you don't have to re-download this data when you set up your phone after the reset. For extra protection from losing your important files, plug your phone into your PC, copy over any folders that have photos, docs, music, etc. You might lose saved game data depending on the game, but for example, Final Fantasy VI has a cloud saving feature which is very handy when restoring a phone or playing on multiple devices. Now for reset, go to Backup and Reset and select Factory Data Reset. After a few minutes, you'll be greeted with a reset phone and you'll have to re-enter your information as you would if it were a new phone. In the end, this might be a bit of a pain fully resetting your phone, but if you use a password manager like LastPass, logging back into apps is relatively easy, and this will give you a chance to install apps as you need them, getting rid of those that you just don't use anymore. With these tips, you'll keep your phone running smooth as the day you bought it. You know, one of the things that I did the last time I did a reset of, the, of my, an Android phone, which was a long, that was like, I think the Galaxy S3 mm -hmm. is the last one I reset. Uh, I would always go into my app store on, on a browser on my computer, and I would delete the apps that I no longer wanted because mm -hmm. otherwise they would automatically reload onto my new installation. Yeah, no, I, I've done that. Pain. Where it used to be really hard. It's a little bit easier going yeah. through the web interface. Well, it used now, to be impossible. There yeah, was it used no, to like be once you add an app to your library, it, it was, was there. always in your library. And I've gone through and deleted apps. That I'm like, no, I'm never going to use that again. Yeah. I don't want it. And so I've like cleaned up my app list so I could just 
do like install all the apps that I had previously, and then under delete the ones you don't use. But, but yeah, no, no, you want this but clean. I it's the same as like when you install on a new Windows machine. Yeah. Like I I install apps as I need them after that. And when you work on a show like All About Android, where we're yeah. looking at apps every week, I think I might have run into this problem sooner than most people because I'm installing new stuff to try new thing, new apps and things. And they kind of like after a while they accumulate and they seem to just like really drag everything down and it's like if you're not going to use the app just get rid of it i did that to one of my uh, jesuit brothers um, what's that so he left his google account open <laughs> so you downloaded and so i got apps a bunch of phone. free apps that i just <laughs> sent to his phone <laughs> it that's took cruel. him a month he's like there's always all these apps that are popping up i'm not installing them i'm like oh yeah that's probably bro it's google yeah it's, it's probably, probably google, google. <laughs> <laughs> they you know they're doing this new thing where they listen to everything you say and then they just install things <laughs> that they think you'd like it's yeah. like, i've got like 15 chess games on my oh my oh they know you like chess yeah that's so yeah. weird yeah. <laughs> that's that's mean that's really mean. i like it though but it's a, a good way to keep your phone clean and it's something that it's not as painful as it used to be because yeah. I remember because I've been using smartphones before the iPhone mm -hmm. and it used to be that's the only place it existed right so you always had to make sure to back it up and then unback it up now with everything stored in the cloud it's almost hey Put in your username, put in your password, and it will go back to the way that it was. Yeah, I like that. And just definitely with the photo stuff, because there's been times where oh I've yes. dropped a phone into a pool. Actually, I didn't drop it. I walked into the pool with the phone. It, wasn't it in your pocket? Uh, it was... You know, they shouldn't make swim trunks with pockets <laughs> is the problem. But yes, it was in my pocket, but mm -hmm. because it was the it was like the first Moto X and I was using Google Photos, all my photos were backed up and I didn't have to worry about, you know, destroying it. Uh, I think you may have destroyed more phones than anyone else in the studio. No, that you destroyed can't be the true. S4 active dropping it off the back of your bike. Yeah, yeah, I and did do that. And then you brought one into the pool. Yeah. And then you just drop one and like crack the screen. I think that was an S3, yeah. Uh. <laughs> but you know what? I fixed uh? a phone. I fixed Shannon's that, Nexus 5 that, once. That does not. Does yeah, that but bring... it did. It, like the camera didn't work anymore. The camera sucked on that phone. Anyway. <laughs> you don't want that phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. We've been having fun, but let's go ahead and go to some feedback. We've uh, we've actually got a good one. Who is it from, Brian? All right, this one comes from Ben, and he asks, I'm going to have faster performance. Am I going to have faster performance with internal graphics or an old GeForce 9400 GTI I picked up? I also picked up a few old AMD cards from the local university surplus, and I'm wondering the same thing. Is any graphics card better than no graphics card? You'd be surprised how many question. times I get asked this, because depends. people say, <laughs> it, unfortunately, yes, yeah. it does depend. Let's just put that out there. The answers that we give will totally depend. I on wish the he hardware. had mentioned what what internal graphics he was going to be using. Precisely, internal graphics have gotten a whole lot better in the last. I'd say even the last three years. I think it's the Intel four. It was like four thousand yep. uh, yep. integrated graphics and that they have a lot on the Macs. It, after that, like they were pretty solid. Like you could actually play games on those. You could play games. They they didn't use up a whole lot of memory, mm -hmm. and and you could actually get decent performance off of them. So. Again, the answer is going to be depends. It sounds as if you're using surplus parts, though. And if you're using surplus parts, you're probably using an older version of integrated graphics. And if that's the case, then the answer is absolutely yes. Yeah. Any dedicated graphics part on an older machine, and I'm thinking four or five years, is going to be way, way faster than any, inter any version of the integrated graphics that were included on the main board. However, again, you're, you're going to have to check. Yeah. Um, I mean, if it's just motherboard, like a basic motherboard, maybe a few years old, and it has integrated graphics, yeah, definitely any graphics card is probably going to be better than that. Um, like, I was just checking on my MacBook right now. It's the in Intel HD 5000, and I've been able to play, like, yeah. you know, Counter-Strike, Civ 5, low settings, but I play games even, on it. Even the 4000 was better than, say, like an older PCI-connected video card. Yeah. Um, but the 5000 actually does put up a fight. Like a 5000 might actually outperform some PCIe-attached graphics card, discrete graphics cards, like the really low-end types. Yeah. Uh, but again, unfortunately, because you didn't mention everything in, in your comment, we can't give you a definitive answer. We, we will say, please come back with us and tell us what you actually have, and we can tell you if, if you go discrete or not. 
Well, I mean, I've seen machines from that you like if you pick up from Costco. Like I think my grandma got uh, it was like an e machine or something like that at Costco, and they don't it didn't come with a graphics card at all, and it was running off the integrated right. graphics. It was like any card that you had put into that would have made it better, just because it's off putting that that graphics for just using the display um, when you're just trying to do things in the background. So obviously it depends, but um, generally if, it, if you're integrated graphics on, a, on an old PC, yeah, put, put a card in there. Yeah. Uh, something else is if, if you are gonna be swapping things in and out, because it sounds like you already bought a lot of parts, you are gonna need a graphics benchmark. Uh, now it's older cards, so what I would suggest is you go to Future Mark and download one of the free benchmarks because that's all you're going to need. It's you're not really pushing a whole lot of pixels on any system, be it an in integrated graphics or a dedicated discrete part, uh, and that will tell you whether or not you've got graphics performance because at that level the differences are probably not going to be all that great. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Hopefully, I think we answered it. We did. We did. Now uh, we do want to do a parting shot because we've we've told you we've challenged you we have said take the projects that we do here on know how take them home make them better and we'll feature them on the show and we have what? exactly that this one comes from stead bonnet stead he has uh, improved our little um, fan to four inch adapter he's hmm. actually made a larger fan to a six inch adapter and this is how it looks. Brian, go ahead and read them off. All right, so he wrote in, I whipped up a 140 millimeter adapter for the six inch air filter canister I mentioned in an earlier post. The 140 millimeter fans are very quiet and have a higher static pressure than the 120 millimeter fans at the same airflow. These are usually greater than 17 each and have a 16 uh, or a six year warranty. My design uses a slightly smaller inside diameter than the fan shroud to ensure you can get a good seal. I printed all of these at 0.3 millimeter layer height with a 20% hex infill on my XYZ DaVinci 1.0 Pro with hatchback black ABS filament. You can see the 9 millimeter brim on the first layer that keep that keep helps keep it from lifting off. Whoa. So a few things about this. I love that, and I love the fact that he uses he's using a brim. I do this every once in a while. I've never made a nine millimeter brim. It's normally like a three millimeter. But essentially, you know how you get that lifting and the bacon effect. Yeah. If you if you make that first layer that just a tiny bit wider, mm -hmm. what will happen is that will hold it down to the print. Yeah. Bag. So it won't peel up. Yeah. Uh, you do have to get rid of that afterwards unless right. you you like the look <laughs> so I, I only do it when i really really need it when the part <laughs> is that, that just called uh, rafting like putting a raft well, underneath well, yeah yeah I mean, it's yeah. basically the same thing and he actually has another link there if you if you go to it uh kara uh the the previous post the one that's in the dock uh that should be in the dock next to the other link there we go ah. so this this is what his project actually looks looks like so that's a 140 millimeter fan on top of a six inch adapter. Now, hmm. this will move a lot of air, and what I love about this is because it's a larger fan, 120 versus 140, or 140 versus 120, which is what we use, you can spin it more slowly and get the same amount of airflow. It makes right. it quieter, it makes it more efficient, and it makes it run cooler. Ah, that's awesome. I like this. Yeah, I good like this. job. Now, I could not do that on the Dremel. Uh, originally, I was going to make a six inch part. Too wide? Uh, it just didn't look right. Oh. <laughs> it just, it just, yeah. So, so, oh, yeah. so you were thinking more aesthetically than function? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got, because I made six inch adapters and they mm -hmm. worked just fine, but I mean, maybe I'll have to up my game to 140 millimeter. <laughs> Whatever. No big deal. Yeah. Fine. Just show fine. us up. Yeah. 120. <laughs> <laughs> no, very good job. Thank you very much. And anybody out there who has taken one of our projects and improved it, please, 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 please send us something in our Google Plus group. Pictures are great. Video is even better. Send yeah. us a video. We'll, we'll, we'll put you on the show because we love to see what the key does come up with. Yeah, there's some cool stuff in there. Yeah. Oh, we know that this was a lot of information, but uh, we always make it easy. If you want to know where the link is for the GitHub so that you can mm -hmm. make your own Alexa, if you want to know where you could buy the parts, if you want to know about the 140 millimeter adapter, you can always find it in our show notes, which are where, Brian? Oh, where they normally are, twit.tv slash kh, and all our previous episodes are there too. So if you missed one, go back, download it. Uh, and there's also, if you did miss one and you don't want to in the future, you can subscribe. Please do. And also don't forget that, uh, well, we've got a Google Plus group. Just we go to just Google Plus. We were talking about yeah, it. Yeah, we were talking about it. You got it. a project. Oh, you got how about a photo. That? Whoa. You got a crash video. No way. Yeah. All for free. 
Google Plus. Google Plus, look for Know How, join up. We have an approval process to get rid of the cam girls and the spam accounts, but we will approve you right away and then you can be geeking out. And by geeking out, I mean it's the best place to geek out. Over 10,000 true DIYers and makers. You can post pictures of your projects. You can ask questions about problems that you're having. And if you're an expert, you can share your knowledge with the next generation of makers. That's right, but uh, if Google Plus isn't your thing and you want to see what me and Padre are doing when we're not working here in the studio, uh, the best place to do that is Twitter. And yeah. I am at Cranky underscore Hippo. And you can find me at Padre SJ. And of course, we've got a third member of the team who we pushes do. all our buttons. It's producer. Oh, yes. Not just technical director, but producer Kara Cole. Kara, yeah. could you uh, tell the folks about you? Um, well, I started out as an engineer here at TWIT, and I'm also a camera operator when we go on live shoots. Padre, Brian, me, and Colleen, our other producer, uh, they just made me a producer, so I'll be doing that for the screensavers on Saturday. Whoa, I don't... Oh, and I, technical directing. I don't think we can have someone who's a producer also be a TD on this well, show. Well, I mean, at this rate, uh, yeah. next month she's going to be like an executive. <laughs> right. And so I think like next, next month I'll just be hosting Know How. Yeah, yeah you're you know? probably right. That's, I mean, yeah. And then she'll be like, learn stuff, Mankey. <laughs> Mankey. <laughs> Mankey candy. Mankey candy. <laughs> Folks, that's all we've got for this episode of Know How. Don't forget to follow us on all the usual places. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go do it. Something.